hopefully, actually you've seen it in other form and guises, but the board specifically um, had a very constructive discussion when it was in draft format, had some very concrete um, suggestions um, and for amendments which we have taken into account and so um, I've discussed with Tobin to bring it back to assure you in a way as well that you put your effort in and we have responded to it rather than you know you bring up all these interesting bits and then you find the strategy is just the same so um, I wanted um, um, to assure you we're quite proud, um, just as a, um, a reminder as well, that the strategy really tried to follow the ethos of the board, um, to listen what matters to people. And um, um, so you will see the steering group was chaired by um, one of our GP colleagues, which was absolutely brilliant, because normally that is territory for um, um, sort of hospital um, um, doctors or community um, um, services. but. Um, this was um, um, GP um, chair, and then we had a lot of um, user engagement and professional engagement, and specifically as well, a really great work with focus groups with young people. So I think um, we've covered um, um, that bit um, um, really well. I think in terms of um, just where that strategy wants to go, Central Health has often just said, oh, it's just um, STIs and contraception. Um, we've very much tried to say this is around well-being, this is around relationships, and then obviously the flip side of um, um, exploitation um, um, in that area to um, avoid. So um, it's a, um, um, hopefully a bit wider. Now, it doesn't gloss over that um, in, in demand, need and demand is going up and the money is um, stagnant. So one of the reasons why we've put all the partners around the table is um, absolutely to say, how can we make it better with what we've got? Because it is terribly fragmented. Just to give you an example, so I commission sexual health um, diagnosis and treatment for most services. Um, but HIV treatment, for example, I don't. So you will have heard in the press, now we have got PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis. What, who funds it, who commissions it? You can just imagine, not um, helpful at all because it's a very effective um, um, treatment. Um, um, I, for example, commission contraception, uh, contraceptive services, but not abortions. Of course I'm working very closely with the CCG so that one um, um, works hand in hand um, with the other, and so on. So the aim was, despite the system, have um, um, something integrated, and despite not a lot of money, use it as best as, um, as we can. So I um, um, recommend um, the strategy to you, and any other questions? Any questions? Just um, uh, so, so I, I'm aware of one challenge that's probably sort of generic to the local system rather than that specifically, and it may it may be historic now. I just don't know. Which is about, around long-acting reversible kind of contraception and access to what because we know it's we know it's very effective. Obviously, it doesn't prevent STIs, but it it it, it is uh, very effective in other respects. And there's, there's sometimes been a little bit of a commissioning gap in terms of making sure that there's consistent high quality access to. Uh, to mark services within general practice and other settings. Uh, do you have a sense of how we're doing it uh, around that at the moment? I haven't got it up my sleeve, to be honest, but um, I'm aware um, um, around the issue, and I'm also aware that um, um, there is a review across South West London how um, we do our local incentive scheme with primary care and how we use our pharmacies. So I think because we inherited it in a specific way when we came over into local authority, um, in, we're very aware that that's still a bit bitty, but it's on the to-do list. So are we happy to approve and endorse the final borough-wide sexual health strategy and implementation plan? Yes. Thank you very much. Right, a uh, final item of the evening is the South West London CCG merger update. That's James. Uh, thank you very much. I, I uh, said that I would do a verbal update because I'm aware I've got a couple of papers before and so therefore I didn't want to cover on the ground. So I think probably further to the last update that I brought, which was just when the South West London CCG merger uh, had uh, been approved by NHS England. Um, merger is uh, still planned to go ahead on the 1st of April 2020.
2020. This means that the six CCGs in South West London, which are Kingston, Richmond, Merton, Walsworth, Sutton and Croydon, will merge to become a single organisation. Um, but we want to talk about progress that we've made in uh, three areas. So the first is uh, just uh, that uh, in terms of uh, the staff at the CCG, I know that uh, many people here who will have colleagues uh, who they work closely with out of the commissioning group. Um, we uh, have been doing extensive work with the staff on the structure. Um, uh, that structure is a combination of uh, a local place team with South West London teams as well. So many of the functions that we run across Merton and Wandsworth at the moment will remain Merton and Wandsworth functions. Um, we have um, we published a, a draft structure for engagement with staff uh, at the end of last summer. Um, we um, uh, then went to formal consultation based on the feedback we had on that. Uh, that formal consultation closed and we are publishing the outcome of that consultation this week. Um, uh, with um, our staff, uh, we've also been through a process of identifying where they may uh, slot into roles in uh, that new structure. Uh, and I am pleased to say that for Merton and Wandsworth staff, uh, the majority of staff do spot into, into roles in the new structure uh, in terms of the functions that we retain locally. Um, for some of our corporate and back office functions, it's it's slightly different because we're then looking at more consolidated South West London teams. But in terms of those core local functions such as transformation and commissioning and uh, engagement and also primary care, uh, we're anticipating a very high degree of continuity with our current staffing, so that's, that's very positive. Um, on the uh, governance arrangement, uh, so we have been working with Merton Health and Care together uh, to revise their terms of reference so that uh, Merton Health and Care together can function as our place-based committee in common. Uh, and so this is effectively where we will be using Merton Health and Care together as much as is practicable so that when we're making decisions about local services that are delegated to the Merton Borough Committee, uh, because we have a, a delegated model of commissioning in the CCG, that we make them as much as practical with our partners in Merton Health and Care together. So this is about us putting uh, a new way of working into effect where uh, we uh, plan and deliver across health and care rather than working in, in isolation. Um, I think it's fair to say in Merton that we've never worked in isolation really, we've very much worked in partnership, but that is very much integrated into constitution of the CCG um, and uh, we'll be using Merton Health and Care together uh, as the vehicle for doing that. Um, on a related note, um, uh, because we have this delegated model, uh, although obviously there will be a single CCG board for South West London, there will be borough committees for each of the six boroughs and each of those borough committees will have a clinical chair. Uh, now, uh, in a number of cases, the clinical chair of the borough uh, will be the current CCG chair. Um, in our case, that won't be the case because um, Andrew has uh, been um, uh, designated as the South West London CCG chair, um, and that role includes being the Borough Committee chair as well. Um, we are in the process uh, uh, with our membership uh, of confirming the appointment of a new Borough Committee chair and deputy chair. This is a process where we uh, have an interview process and then, and then we've put forward candidates to the membership on that basis. Uh, it is still in process, I anticipate it concluding over the next one to two weeks and clearly when I am in a position to confirm who the next Borough Committee Chair and Deputy Chair are, I will write to the Health and Wellbeing Board to confirm that. Um, obviously just wanted to thank Councillor Byers for his support during that process earlier this month as well. Uh, so that's probably the three bits of update that I wanted to provide. I'm happy to take any questions. That concludes the Ottomobile. Thank you all very much.